Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about scalp biopsies. And scalp biopsies play a crucial role in diagnosing and managing hair loss conditions or just in general skin conditions. Especially when it comes to distinguishing between various types of skin conditions and primarily the topic of this video, alopecia. This goes from androgenetic alopecia, which is the most common cause of hair loss versus other forms of alopecia that conventional drugs like finasteride or dutastride, which would be used for androgenetic alopecia, wouldn't be able to treat, or at least very effectively. But the point is that sometimes people may be comorbid, which means they may have an additional condition on top of their androgenetic alopecia. So the effectiveness of finasteride or dutastride can become masked if the individual has a particular comorbid condition of additional alopecia. So for example, somebody may have androgenetic alopecia and also alopecia areata. Now, many hair loss conditions such as lichen planopolaris or LLP, central centrifugal cicatricial alopecia, also known as CCA, I'll just say triple CA, and alopecia areata and traction alopecia all have a fundamental basis in inflammation, such that they cause inflammation of the skin and microinflammation around the hair follicle. Topical anti-inflammatory drugs like tacrolimus, my favorite, and clobatazole are commonly used to combat these issues, particularly in the case of CCA, triple CA, Metformin, a type 2 diabetes drug, is sometimes used to treat those particular alopecia conditions. So even though they all have a fundamental basis in inflammatory responses that ultimately result in the hair follicle becoming greatly downregulated in the amount of hair that it can produce, or if not set to dormancy or just permanent destruction, the general treatment might vary between different types of alopecia, but if it does have that sort of inflammatory response, which from what we know, alopecias tend to all be more or less the same, with the typical difference being what causes the alopecia, right? Then to me, it kind of necessitates that we should be checking if people have other conditions, right? Again, yes, androgenetic alopecia is the most common cause of hair loss, right? But for people who are, maybe they're seeing some trouble or some random spots on their scalp seemingly just going bald out of nowhere, just significantly losing hair in a kind of unusual way or unusual pattern, so to speak. This is where I would say we have to point that particular person in the direction of a scalp biopsy. And just in general, I think it would be very helpful for patients to know if they're having high signs of inflammation, so this would be a high presence of leukocytes, macrophages, just typical white blood cells, right? And it would be helpful to allow patients to see or get some sort of insight like, okay, we know your scalp DHT went down from this point in time to this point in time, so we can accurately say that, okay, your treatment is working very well, right? Along with other insights that some people may be interested in knowing aromatase activity, perhaps some sort of estimate on 5-alpha reductase activity. The point in this video is that a scalp biopsy is just another tool that gives you an insight into knowing what's going on in your scalp. Now, I mentioned earlier those other conditions like CCCA, alopecia areata, LLP, traction alopecia, and there are just a lot of different variations when it comes to these. And sometimes when it comes to a condition like CCCA, which sort of looks like LLP, but the thing is that it CCCA is commonly seen in African American, particularly African descent people, mostly female African descent people, and LLP is commonly seen in Caucasian women, right? But it's not to say that either of these groups can't have it, right? And I think when it comes to diagnosing these alopecia conditions, there is much discussion whether or not some of these conditions are just the same, right? Because they have similar or very near similar characteristics. With LLP and CCCA, you can typically see it around the hairline, but it can also show up on the vertex and the crown itself. And CCCA is typically in like the center part of the scalp. And the only difference between these two is pretty much the population that it affects. Now, there's some discussions about particular gene expressions, but that hasn't been fully fleshed out. They more or less have the same sort of prognosis, right? High presence of leukocytes and macrophages. So yes, this is a particular case where the scalp biopsy can only tell you that your immune system is doing something 
And for whatever reason, we conceptualize it in this particular way due to these particular markers that are in your biopsy. So aside from androgenetic alopecia, and even alopecia areata, and more extreme forms of alopecia areata, like alopecia areata universalis, and you can even throw in traction alopecia there as well, much of these conditions follow a sort of diagnosis of exclusion, where they go through a host of different medical conditions, and then by a process of elimination, supplemented with that particular scalp biopsy or other lab reports, then they come down to whether or not you have a specific alopecia. But seriously, it just helps people to have some sort of understanding of what's going on, right? Regardless of the name of the alopecia you have, if it's not androgenetic alopecia, or if it's not alopecia areata, regardless of the name, right, we want to know what actually is going on. Does this person have a, like I said before, have a high presence of leukocytes? Is there a sign of chronic inflammation? And from there, we can go about treating that and particularly using immunomodulators like tacrolimus or picrolimus, or the other ones, topically, of course, and also using something like clobatazole or other, you know, corticosteroids. So my message pretty much for this video is, if you feel like you have something else going on, if you have any sort of itchiness or something excess, right, signs of inflammation, like a really scaly kind of stretched out and weirdly dried like scalp, right? That's hot to the touch, like it feels like heat or whatever. If you have any of those sorts of like weird conditions, it'll only help you to see a dermatologist or some sort of medical professional to get a scalp biopsy done so you can understand what additional treatment you may need. So that pretty much does it. This is a bit of a off the cuff kind of video. I'm trying, you know, to be a bit more casual in these things and not reading from a script. But if you guys like this video, please share it with somebody that may benefit from hearing this. Get a scalp biopsy. Because a lot of the times, especially in the consultations that I do, people just tell me that they walk in the office, the doctor just, yeah, looks at their head and says, oh, whatever, it's, it's, it's androgenetic alopecia, which, yeah, most of the times it is. But I've talked to a few people where it's like, it's androgenetic alopecia along with something like chronic seborrheic dermatitis or something like CCCA. I had one particular female that I talked to, she had CCCA. And other people, you know, just having other sort of inflammatory conditions on top of their androgenetic alopecia, which can, you know, you can take all the finasteride and dutasteride you want, but if you have, again, those inflammatory conditions, it sort, it sort of masks things and prevents you from seeing the true efficacy of that hair loss treatment. And also the scalp cameras, right? You want to get a good scalp camera just to see what's going on. Another person I was consulting with, they had a particular issue where their hair shaft, although the doctors would tell them that the hair was terminal, for whatever reason, it was breaking at the shaft. We looked it up. We looked at his scalp biopsies along with using a scalp camera. And it seemed like he had the condition trichorexis nondosa, which essentially is a condition that causes the hair shaft over time to lose integrity break off, split ends, you know, just in general, the hair doesn't have a strong protein structure, right? So just having all these things and understanding of what's going on on your scalp only goes to help you. So this video has gone on long enough. I'm going to end it now, but thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace out.